Repair of a Symptomatic Boctalec Hernia in the Adult by John Alfred Carr. First described by Boctalec in 1848, asymptomatic hernias are estimated to occur in less than 1% of adults. A Boctalec hernia occurs through a congenital defect in the fusion of the posterior lateral foramina of the diaphragm. Mostly located on the right side in 68%, left in 18%, and bilateral in only 14%, approximately 100 cases have been reported in the world's literature to date. When identified, repair is indicated to avoid strangulation and necrosis of the herniated viscera. Incarceration of almost every intra-abdominal organ has been described in the literature. Hypoplastic lung is often encountered if the hernia is large at birth or persists into adulthood. 95% of all Bakhtalek hernias are diagnosed and repaired in children. Only 5% occur in adults and most are not symptomatic. I present the case of a 26-year-old female with mental retardation who presented with nausea and vomiting. A CT scan to look for bowel obstruction showed the hernia entering the right hemithorax within a defect posterior to the diaphragm and the liver. This CT scan shows the hernia posterior to the heart within the right hemithorax, and a lower cut shows it entering the chest behind the liver. The latissimus dorsi muscle was retracted but not divided. Upon entering the chest, the hernia can be seen posterior to the diaphragm just beneath the lung. Closer inspection reveals that the hernia is densely adherent to the posterior surface of the diaphragm. Inspecting the hernia sac laterally, we see the azagous vein running here between the hernia sac and the lateral chest wall. I use Metzenbaum scissors to carefully open the hernia sac and inspect the viscera inside. Once the hernia sac is opened, we are able to visualize the stomach lying within. The incision is enlarged to open up the hernia sac and the stomach is found to be densely adherent to the inside of the stack sac due to its long-standing nature. The adhesions are carefully taken down to free the stomach from the inside of the hernia sac. Once this is accomplished, with gentle sponge stick pressure, the stomach can be easily reduced back into the abdominal cavity as shown here. The hernia sac is then excised and again the stomach can easily, easily be reduced back into the abdominal cavity. Notice that as the stomach is reduced, the aorta pops into view on the left side of the image here and is shown pulsating. This image shows the esophagus, and directly next to it on the left is the aorta. Pledgeted proline sutures are placed within the posterior aspect of the diaphragm, and additional pledgeted sutures are placed within the endothoracic fascia laterally to secure our circumferential repair. A piece of composite polypropylene and Gore-Tex mesh is brought onto the field and folded onto itself and sutured so that only the Gore-Tex is exposed against the viscera. It is then sewn into place circumferentially using our pledgeted sutures and here is the patch sewn into place at the end of the case. The patient's preoperative chest x-ray shows the hernia above the right hemidiaphragm. Postoperatively, the hernia has been nicely reduced. The patient was extubated in the operating room as no hypoplastic lung was identified. She did well being discharged on post -operative